The Rings of Power begins by showing the atmosphere in Valinor during a time of peace. The bright light that shone upon the world at that time came from the two trees of Valinor, Topirian and Lorelin, known as the Silver Tree and the Gold Tree. The two trees were apparently of enormous stature and exuded dew, pure and magical light in liquid form. Meanwhile, Valinor, also known as the Undying Lands, was where the angelic beings, better known as the Elves, lived. One day, a young female elf, Galadriel, tried to make her paper boat sail along the river. Galadriel attempted to prove to her friends that her paper boat could navigate the rushing river. However, some of her friends, who were jealous of Galadriel's success then, threw her paper boat with stones until finally, her paper boat broke and sank. Galadriel felt angry and wanted to hit one of the boys who made her paper boat break. At the same time, her older brother, Finrod, arrived at the place. He tried to stop her, who was about to fight with the boy. Finrod then picked up Galadriel's paper boat from the river and praised her for making a good one. He advised his little sister to learn to seek the truth in her own way because he wouldn't always be on her side to teach her. Finrod and the elves believed that the light of the two trees of Valinor would always shine upon the world and that a time of peace would last forever. However, their faith was broken when the Dark Lord, Morgoth, attacked Valinor and took away the bright light that had been shining upon the world. When the two trees of Valinor that lit the world were destroyed by Morgoth, the Legion of Elves sailed across the Sundering Seas to Middle-earth and waged a devastating war against the Dark Lord that lasted for centuries. After Morgoth was defeated, his orcs' army spread worldwide, led by his servant, Sauron, a powerful sorcerer. At that time, Galadriel's older brother, Finrod, died while hunting Sauron. Galadriel seemed so sad and devastated over her brother's death. When she was about to bury Finrod, Galadriel saw a scar on Finrod's chest that looked like a particular symbol and was a sign of Sauron before killing her brother. Galadriel then remembered Finrod, who swore to kill Sauron. But since Finrod had already been killed by Sauron, Galadriel was determined to kill Sauron to fulfill the last wish of her older brother. Galadriel then led a legion of elves to hunt Sauron and the orcs to the end of the earth. However, these efforts soon became pointless because Galadriel and her army needed help finding Sauron. Centuries later, after Morgoth and his army were defeated, peace again was back in the world, and the elves began to forget about the great battle. Most of them began to assume that Sauron was just a memory and that the threat, at last, was ended. However, it was not so with Galadriel, who believed that Sauron was still alive and insisted on finding him, then killing him to avenge the death of her older brother. Thousands of years later, Galadriel and a company of elves found an abandoned fortress in the northern wastelands of Forodwaith. They find evidence of black magic and an anvil bearing Sauron's mark, like the one on Finrod's body. Eladriel believed this was part of a trail left for orcs to follow. But one of her companions said that Sauron might have died long ago because the war broke out centuries ago. In the middle of their debate, Galadriel and her companions were suddenly attacked by a snow troll and sustained injuries before it was killed by Galadriel. She commanded that they continue the search, but the others refused because they assumed that Galadriel was too ambitious to kill Sauron and had another purpose that deviated from the task ordered by the High King. Meanwhile, in the wilder lands of Ravanion in the east of Middle-earth, two human hunters walked carefully through the area because they were afraid of the Harfoots. One of the three breeds of hobbits in Middle-earth, they were said to be very violent and cruel. However, the Harfoots are not as cruel as they are rumored to be. They fear the outside world, so they always camouflage to cover their existence. In addition, the Harfoots usually have their own communities and continuously move around following the changing seasons. One of them was a community of nomadic Harfoots who lived in the Ravanian region and were surprised to see human hunters passing nearby at an uncommon time of year. Meanwhile, a group of young Harfoots, including Nori Brandifoot and Poppy Proudfellow, went to a nearby farm to eat berries. Still, they returned to camp immediately when they found wolf footprints. Upon arrival at the base, Nori met her mother, Marigold, and put forward her wish to explore the outside world. Marigold looked surprised to hear her daughter's words. She immediately went against Nori's wishes, saying that the outside world was fierce and dangerous. Sometime later, a half-elf named Elrond got word of his best friend, Galadriel, who had just arrived in Linden. Elrond seemed happy when he heard about Galadriel's return and immediately rushed to meet her. When they finally met, Galadriel then expressed her wish to Elrond to continue the search for Sauron and the orcs. Galadriel even begged Elrond, the herald and speechwriter for the High King, to convince the High King to provide more soldiers and supplies for her next quest. However, Galadriel's request had the partial support of Elrond because he believed Sauron was long dead and the orcs had been wiped out. He also pointed out that the High King had been kind enough and respected Galadriel's determined wish to avenge her brother's death. Elrond believed that the High King would not approve Galadriel's request to continue the search and would officially stop the hunting mission against Sauron and the orcs. Even so, Elrond promised her that he would arrange a meeting between Galadriel and the High King so that she could convey her wishes directly to the High King. Shortly after that, the High King, Gil-galad, awarded Galadriel and her companions for their efforts to eradicate the orcs for centuries. After that, Gil-galad announced that the war against Morgoth's army was over and that the elves would enjoy a life of peace. 
Gil-galad also grants Galadriel and her companions the great honor of sailing across the Sea to Valinor, where they can live an eternal life in peace. Galadriel intended to turn down this offer, but Elrond convinced her it was time to stop fighting. A word that the war was overreaching was a group of elves in the Southlands of Middle-earth. They had been watching over Turarad, a village of men descended from allies of Morgoth. One of the elves, Arendir, regularly patrolled the town. But he soon realized that most of the villagers didn't like the presence of the elves in their village. He tried to ignore this because he only carried out his duty to watch over the villagers who were descendants of Morgoth's loyalists. However, Arendir seemed to have romantic feelings towards a female human named Bronwyn, who professed as the healer and was a single mother with a son. Arendir's comrade, Medhur, told Arendir that the romance established between an elf and a human never ends happily. When Medhur tried to convince Arendir to forget his love for Bronwyn, they got orders from the High King to leave the sentry post at Turarad and return to Linden because the High King had declared that the war was over. The elf soldiers felt very happy because they finally got back home. However, not so with Arendir, who looked gloomy after knowing they were leaving the guard post. Arendir had felt at home and comfortable living in Turarad for over 70 years. He didn't want to leave Turarad, but he had no choice but to obey the High King's orders. Before leaving, Arendir took the time to meet Bronwyn to say goodbye. Though she felt sad because Arendir would leave her, Bronwyn tried to hide her sadness because she didn't want to burden Arendir. At the same time, Bronwyn's son, Theo, told his mother that an old man had come to their house with a sick cow. Bronwyn rushed to the old man, who asked her to check the condition of his sick cow. Arendir, who happened to be at Bronwyn's house, studied the cow's disease. Bronwyn confirmed that the cow was not injured or had a fever. Upon hearing that, Arendir then milked the cow and was surprised to find that the cow was leaking black liquid instead of fresh milk. Bronwyn assumed that the cow might have eaten poisonous grass, so she asked where the cow had been grazing. The old man said the cow had wandered around Hordern a few days ago. Hearing this, Arendir hurried to Hordern to conduct an investigation, and Bronwyn decided to accompany him. However, how surprised they were to find Hordern had burned. In the meantime, Theo and his friends sneaked into a barn owned by one of the villagers, where they found a broken sword bearing Sauron's mark. Meanwhile, across the Sundering Seas, Galadriel and his companions prepared to enter Valinor, which appeared as a great light. However, Galadriel had second thoughts about abandoning her search for Sauron and decided to jump from the ship to continue the hunt for Sauron. At the same time, a meteor flew across Middle-earth and crashed near the Harfoot's camp. The curious Nori and Poppy then rushed to the location of the meteor crash and found a strange man in the crater. Nori intended to conduct an investigation by walking close to the strange man and was surprised to find him alive, surrounded by cold fire. When Nori touched his face, the strange man suddenly woke up and grabbed Nori's hand while screaming, causing a strong vortex of wind that lifted objects around them. Even though she was afraid, Nori tried to calm the strange man by looking at him directly, until finally the strange man calmed down and things began to get better. Because of feeling sorry, Nori also decided to help the strange man, but this was immediately opposed by Poppy, who assumed that the strange man might prey on them. However, Nori continued to convince her to help the strange man. They struggled to move him away from the crater and into a makeshift shelter. When observing the strange man's physical appearance more closely, Nori assumed that he was not a human or an elf, but Nori couldn't confirm that either. Meanwhile, in the ruins of Hordern, Arendir and Bronwyn found no survivors or bodies. They discovered a tunnel below one of the houses, and Arendir entered to learn where it came from. He intended to investigate the tunnel to uncover the fire incident that occurred in Hordern. He then asked Bronwyn to return to Turarad and warn the villagers to be careful. At the same time, in Linden, Elrond met a great elven smith, Lord Celebrimber, by order of Gil-galad, who assigned Elrond to help Lord Celebrimber's new project. Lord Celebrimber was planning to build a forge capable of creating powerful objects and required a workforce that High King Gil-galad could not provide. Elrond suggested that they look to the dwarves for help. Lord Celebrimber agreed with the suggestion, and Elrond traveled to Khazad Doom to meet with Elrond's old friend, Prince Durin IV. Upon arrival at Khazad Doom, Elrond was surprised that he was not welcome there and invoked the Rite of the Rock breaking contest between himself and Durin. The next day, Nori visited the makeshift shelter to deliver food to the strange man. Once there, Nori was shocked because she didn't find the strange man anywhere. She tried to find the strange man around the place until finally finding the man who was carving something on a rock. She tried to greet the strange man, but she again went berserk and almost created a whirlwind like last night. Nori then said that she was the one who helped him and tried to convince him that she was only trying to help. When the strange man regained his composure, Nori then introduced herself. But the strange man didn't remember anything about himself when Nori asked about his origins. At the same time, Nori's father, Largo Brandifoot, assisted his fellow Harfoots in raising the wooden stake. However, the stake was too heavy, so Largo had difficulty holding it up and sprained his leg. Because of his sprained leg, it is feared that Largo will not be able to migrate with his people the following season. Meanwhile, swimming back to Middle-earth, Galadriel encountered a raft of stranded humans, escaping from a sea creature that destroyed their ship. 
Shortly after, the sea creatures returned to attack them, so Galadriel decided to swim away to save herself. After the assault, the only survivor was Halbrand, the Southlands, who finally reunited with Galadriel. Halbrand explained that he was escaping from orcs, who had attacked his homeland. Galadriel glanced at the necklace worn by Halbrand and immediately realized that he was a king. Meanwhile, in the Khazad Doom, Elrond lost the contest, which meant he was banished from all dwarven lands. As Durin escorted him out, he learned he was not welcome because he had not visited Durin for twenty years. Durin was offended that Elrond missed his marriage and the birth of his children. For the elves, twenty years was a short time. Still, Durin thought otherwise. Elrond, who felt guilty, apologized to Durin and begged to be reunited with Durin's wife, Dessa, so that he could apologize directly to her. Seeing the sincerity on Elrond's face, Durin finally brought him to see his wife because they were also old friends. Dessa was pleased to meet Elrond and didn't mind his absence from their wedding. After Dessa encouraged Durin and Elrond to make up, Durin agreed to hear Elrond's proposal, which he later relayed to his father, King Durin III. In Turarad, Bronwyn told the villagers about the fire incident in Hordern and its residents who disappeared without a trace. Bronwyn also informed about the tunnel excavated very neatly and the possibility of the tunnel leading to Turarad, so she rushed back to warn the villagers. However, the villagers did not believe her words because she could not provide evidence to justify her theories. At the same time, Theo, who was at home, heard the noise from the wooden floor. Curious, Theo then perforated the wooden floor and how surprised he was when he saw an eye turning towards him. He was terrified and hid in the closet. Shortly after, Bronwyn arrived at the house and found her place in a mess. There was a big hole in the wood floor. Bronwyn tried to find her son until finally, Theo showed up and asked her to go for help immediately. Shortly after, an orc emerged from the pit and immediately attacked Bronwyn. Luckily, Bronwyn could avoid the attack and tried to fight back with Theo's help. Ultimately, they managed to kill the orc and cut off his head. Bronwyn then took the orc's head to the villagers. She used his head to assure the other villagers to flee the town for the nearby Tower of the Elven Watchers. After ascertaining the orcs' whereabouts in their village, the villagers finally believed Bronwyn's words and packed their things to evacuate to a safer place. Shortly afterward, Bronwyn rushed back to her house and told Theo to pack their things. Theo brought the broken sword, which appeared to begin reforming after drawing blood from a wound on Theo's wrist. At the same time, Arendir, walking down the underground tunnel in Hordern Village, was shocked to find an orc colony. He tried to escape and hide, even though he was eventually caught. In the evening, Nori and Poppy went to the strange man to tell him that the Harfoots were going to migrate. However, they realized he did not speak their language as he attempted to communicate something. Nori and Poppy later found the stranger looking at the stars. He then used magic to break open Poppy's lantern of fireflies and arrange them into a constellation that Nori did not recognize. Nori believed that they could help him by finding that constellation. Even though she did not understand the constellation, Nori knew where she could find information about constellations. Meanwhile, in Khazad Doom, Prince Durin told his father about Elrond's proposal. At first, King Durin assumed that Elrond knew about their secret and came to Khazad Doom to remove the precious thing they had just discovered. But Prince Durin convinced his father that Elrond didn't know about their discovery because he had known Elrond for years. The scene then turns to Galadriel and Halbrand trapped in a storm that makes their raft swirl in the middle of the sea. They tried to survive the crushing of the great waves, but Galadriel fell into the sea with the rope wrapped around her body. Halbrand, who saw Galadriel almost drowning, rushed to help her by cutting the rope and bringing her back up to the raft. The next day, Galadriel woke up and discovered that she and Halbrand were on a ship captained by Elendil, who then took them to Númenor, an island kingdom ruled by men. Halbrand, first time in Númenor, was so fascinated to see the beauty of Númenor, like the elves' realms. Galadriel later explained that the ancestor of Númenorians used to ally with the elves to fight Morgoth. As a reward for their services during the war, the elves were given to the surviving Numenorians an island continent in the Western Sea, which became Numenor, their abiding place. They were also gifted with far longer life, greater height, and greater wisdom. From the start, there was a friendship between the Numenorians and the elves. But as time passed, the kings of Numenor began to envy the elves for their immortality, and a fear of death infected the island. They founded many colonies in Middle-earth, North, and South. With the gradual creation of a colonial empire, the pride of the kings grew until they finally broke off their friendship with the elves. Galadriel and Halbrand were then taken to face the Queen Regent Númenor, Muriel, where Galadriel openly asked Queen Muriel to prepare ships and supplies so that she could quickly head to Middle-earth. Galadriel even alluded to the Númenorians' ancestors, who earned the island as a gift from the elves. However, Queen Muriel was offended by Galadriel's words while asserting that their ancestors paid her with their sacrifice so that the Númenorians owed nothing to the elves. In the middle of the debate, Halbrand attempted to resolve by asking Queen Muriel to consider Galadriel's request. At the same time, he and Galadriel would remain in Númenor until the Queen decided on Galadriel's request. Queen Muriel seemed to think of his suggestion and finally decided to consider Galadriel's request. 
After Galadriel and Halbrand left the palace hall, Queen Muriel asked Farazin about Elendo, the captain who saved Galadriel and Halbrand. Farazin explained that Elendil was the nobleman who now served as the captain of the Sea Guardsmen and had a son named Isildur, who was currently training as a Sea Guardsman. Queen Muriel then called Elendil and asked him why he saved Galadriel, an elf, and brought her to Númenor, even though he had known that the Númenorians had broken ties with the elves centuries ago. Elendil argued that he only did what he considered wise enough because the sea put Galadriel in his path, and Elendil believed that the sea was always suitable. Queen Muriel seemed dissatisfied with Elendil's answer and told him to make amends while giving him a sword. The scene then turns to show Arendir, who is taken to an orc construction camp where other captives dig trenches in the Southlands. In that place, Arendir found his fellow elves, Medhur and Rivion, who had also been brought there. Arendir and his comrades believe that the orcs deliberately dug tunnels so their movements would not be detected by the Legion of Elves guarding the Southlands. Arendir secretly watched the orcs around him and realized that they were looking for something that seemed essential to the success of their plan. Arendir realized that the orcs were sensitive to sunlight so he devised a plan with his fellow elves to defeat the orcs during the day. But one of the orcs realized they were up to something and then killed Medhur, one of the elves, to warn Arendir and his comrades. Meanwhile, Galadriel, instructed by Queen Muriel to remain in the palace, secretly fled toward the port and was about to steal one of the ships docked at the pier. However, the action was immediately stopped by Elendil, who made Galadriel surprised by speaking in the elf language. Elendil then told Galadriel about the Hall of Lore and decided to take her there. At the same time, Halbrand tried to apply for a job at the blacksmith workshop but was rejected because he was not a Numenorian. He also experienced bullying by the Numenorians, who considered themselves more robust and respectable than ordinary humans like Halbrand. Out of annoyance, he stole the guild crest belonging to one of the Numenors, a unique identification belonging to the Numenorians. However, the action was caught, and Halbrand was in a fight with a group of residents. He was finally arrested by the royal guards on patrol. In the meantime, Galadriel had arrived at the Hall of Lore. She seemed surprised to learn that the last king of Númenor, Tar Palantir, still valued the friendship between the Númenorians and the elves. Elendil said that the last king of Númenor was even forced to give up his throne. He was exiled by his people for his loyalty to the elves. Afterward, Galadriel tried to find information about Sauron's mark through an ancient record that may have been kept in the Hall of Lore. While observing Sauron's mark, Galadriel realized that it was not a sign, but a map of the Southlands, where Sauron would establish a new empire to carry on Morgoth's plan to rule the world and spread evil across the globe. The scene then shows the Harfoot's elder, Sadok Burroughs, training the Harfoot children's mentality and dexterity as they migrate. At the same time, Marigold looked anxious because of her husband's condition, who has not fully recovered from a sprain. Largo tried to calm his wife by saying they would not experience any obstacles as long as their wagon was at the forefront when migrating. Meanwhile, Nori and Poppy sneaked into Sadok's tent, stole some pages of the book about the constellations, and intended to hand over the book to the strange man. Shortly after, the stranger secretly visited the Harfoots' camp to meet Nori and Poppy. Nori then handed the book to the stranger, who read it by the campfire. However, the book's pages were burned due to a lack of caution. They caused an uproar that attracted the attention of the other Harfoots. The existence of the strange man was finally known by the Harfoots, who then cornered Nori for smuggling a stranger into their community. Sadok, the elder of the Harfoots, put Nori and her family in the back row when they migrated as punishment for Nori's actions. In the Numenor, after delivering Galadriel to the Hall of Lore to look for clues, Elendo met his children, Isildur and Irian, and said that an elven woman named Galadriel was now in Numenor and waiting for the ship to take her to Middle-earth. He informed Isildur might be appointed captain of the vessel that would deliver Galadriel to Middle-earth. At the same time, Galadriel found Halbrand in prison and told him about the information she discovered in the Hall of Lore. Galadriel revealed that she knew Halbrand was the true king of the Southlands, descended from the man who united the tribes of the Southlands and was loyal to Morgoth. She then asked Halbrand to return to Middle-earth with her to redeem both of their bloodlines. However, Halbrand warned her that his ancestors were humans loyal to Morgoth and that he was not the hero she expected. In the meantime, Queen Regent Muriel met her father, King Tar Palantir, who was lying helpless because of his illness. Muriel told her father that an elven woman had come to Númenor and asked them for help. The next day, the Harfoot started migrating while Nori and her family struggled to keep up due to Largo, Nori's father, who had an injured ankle. Shortly afterward, the stranger appeared and helped them with their cart. Meanwhile, in the Southlands, Arendir, Rivion, and some other captives tried to escape from the orcs when the sun was highest. However, the orcs then sent a warg, a huge and evil kind of wolf, to attack them. Arendir managed to kill it, and Rivion made it out of the trench, but he was killed by the orcs. Ultimately, their efforts were in vain, as Rivion and the others were killed. Arendir was free and was brought before the mysterious leader of the orcs, Adar. 
The scene then turns to Queen Regent Muriel, who had a vision of the downfall of Númenor, which begins with the white tree, whose leaves began to fall, and the appearance of the great wave that smashed Númenor. After receiving this vision, Queen Muriel worried whether she had made the right decision by refusing Galadriel's request. Queen Muriel found out that Galadriel went to the Hall of Lore, then called the elven woman to the court to interrogate her in person. Meanwhile, Númenor residents, worried that Galadriel would incite their queen to establish a friendship with the elves, gathered in the capital square to collect more people who would later oppose the queen if Muriel decided to work with the elves. Shortly after that, Farazin appeared and began to make speeches in front of the Númenors, asserting that the Númenors would never ally with the elves, and he would confirm that. Meanwhile, Galadriel showed Queen Muriel the ancient records she found in the Hall of Lore. She told the queen that Halbrand was the king of the Southlands who would unite the people of the Southlands to fight against Sauron and the orcs. She then tried to convince Queen Muriel to give her full support to her and Halbrand so that they could save the people of the Southlands who were currently suffering from the attacks of the orcs. However, Queen Muriel immediately refused Galadriel's request because she had to prioritize the safety of her people, especially since she had just gotten a vision of the downfall of Númenor. Knowing that she could not convince Queen Muriel, Galadriel then asked permission to meet with the true ruler of Númenor, King Tar Palantir, Muriel's father, who was once allied with the elves. Upon hearing that, Queen Muriel was exasperated, and they got into a heated argument until, finally, the queen decided to imprison Galadriel for her presumptuous behavior. At the same time, Isildur, who was taking the exam to become the sea cadet, suddenly lost focus because he kept hearing a woman's voice calling his name. Daydreaming, the rope Isildur was supposed to wrap around the pole suddenly slipped from his grasp. He received a stern warning from his mentor that led to the expulsion of Isildur and his two friends, Valandil and Antimo, from the list of candidates for the sea cadets. Valandil felt upset at him because, due to Isildur's carelessness, he and Antimo were also expelled, even though being the sea cadet had been their dream since childhood. Meanwhile, in the Southlands, Arendir was captured by the orcs. He was brought before Adar, and the leader called the Lord Father by the orcs. Adar decided to free Arendir and told him to deliver an ultimatum to the Southlanders taking refuge in Osterith, forsake their claims to the Southlands and swear fealty to him, or Osterith would be Adar's next target. From his behavior, Adar implied that he was after something much more critical, the broken sword that bore the mark of Sauron. By freeing Arendir, then indirectly, Adar used Arendir to find the sword and bring it to him. Meanwhile, the villagers of Turarad, who were displaced in Osterith to avoid the orcs' attack, began to experience difficulties because food supplies were running out. Theo then told his mother that he and Rowan would return to Turarad to find groceries in the homes of the villagers who had been abandoned. Bronwyn immediately rejected her son's wish because returning to a village already ruled by the orcs was very dangerous. However, Theo ignored his mother's warning and secretly went to the village with Rowan. They went during the day when the orcs chose to hide from the sunlight, which could make their skin burn. Although they had gotten quite a lot of groceries, Theo decided to take more groceries by entering one of the villagers' houses that had been abandoned. At the same time, the sky suddenly became dark because the sun was covered by clouds. Rowan, who realized that, decided to flee because he didn't want to be caught by the orcs, leaving Theo still in the house. Looking for groceries in the house, Theo was shocked by the appearance of an orc suddenly attacking him. He then removed the broken sword and used his blood to make the broken sword transform into a real sword that could be used as a weapon. The orc tried to snatch the broken sword from Theo, but he managed to hurt the orc, fled outside the house, and then entered the well to hide. Unable to locate Theo, the orc summoned his comrades, told them he had found the broken sword they had been looking for and told them to capture Theo. The scene then turns to Elrond and Lord Celebrimbor watching the elves and dwarves working together on the forge in a region. They seemed to engage in conversation, where Celebrimbor felt suspicious of King Durin III, who quickly accepted their proposal as if the King of Dwarves was hiding something. Lord Celebrimbor then asked Elrond to return to Khaz ed Doom to investigate his suspicions. Shortly after, Elrond finally arrived at Khaz ed Doom and met Dessa, who indirectly implied that her husband had kept something from Elrond. Out of curiosity, Elrond secretly entered the mining. It had been frequented by Prince Durin, who had been mining in the old mine below the Miromir. When Elrond tried to reveal something hidden by his old friend, suddenly Durin appeared and pointed at Elrond as a spy. However, Elrond denied the allegations and assured him that he did not care about what Durin was hiding because he was more concerned with their friendship. Durin finally believed his words and asked the elven man to swear not to reveal his secret to anyone. Durin said that the dwarves had found a new ore, Mithril, which resembled silver, but was more potent and lighter than steel. Since Mithril was very valuable and could be used as a weapon, he intended to get more Mithril by mining deeper. Durin then gave Mithril to Elrond as a sign of their friendship. But then, the mine suddenly collapsed. He rushed in to rescue the dwarves who were still in the mine. In the evening, Galadriel was released from prison because Queen Muriel had decided to return her to Linden on a strict escort. However, Galadriel fought back and managed to escape the pursuit of Farazin and the royal warriors.
She then infiltrated the tower where King Tar Palantir was and was very surprised to see the king lying sick in his bed. Queen Muriel, accompanying her father, then asked Galadriel to keep King Tar Palantir's health from the Numenors. Queen Muriel later said that her father became very agitated shortly after the coronation and became the king of Numenor. Tar Palantir believed that the downfall of Numenor would occur and was due to the elves' wrath on the Numenorians, who had severed their friendship with them. Therefore, Tar Palantir tried to re-establish cooperation with the elves, as their ancestors had done before. However, the decision was opposed by the Numenors and caused revolts everywhere. The inhabitants of Numenor then demanded Tar Palantir give up his throne until finally, Muriel was appointed to replace her father as the Queen of Numenor. Afterward, Queen Muriel took Galadriel to a room with a palantir, an indestructible crystalline ball that could reveal past or future events to anyone who touched it. Queen Muriel asked Galadriel to touch the palantir, and Galadriel had a vision of the downfall of Numenor, just as the queen saw. Therefore, the queen decided to send her back to Linden instead of giving her a ship to Middle-earth. Queen Muriel assumed that the downfall of Numenor would happen if Galadriel went to Middle-earth. However, Galadriel pointed out that Queen Muriel's actions tended to ignore the orcs' attacks in the Southlands, which would have caused the crime to spread more and more and probably reach Numenor. She tried to convince Queen Muriel to fight alongside Sauron and the evil that would apply in Middle-earth. However, the Queen remained steadfast in her stance of not establishing friendships with the elves. Meanwhile, in the Southlands, Theo tried to climb out of the well in search of a safer hiding place. But since it was late, the orcs became more accessible and freer to roam the area, making it difficult for him to escape the village of Turarad. He finally made it out of the well, but he was caught by an orc who went after him. When Theo was about to be killed by the orcs, Arandir suddenly showed up at the place and immediately saved Theo. Arandir and Theo then fled into the forest and kept running to avoid the pursuit of the orcs. Finally, they were freed from the pursuit of the orcs. They chose to hide in the forest because the sun had risen. Arandir and Theo rushed to Osterith. Arandir then told Bronwyn about Adar's ultimatum. Arandir said that the people of the Southlands must give their land to Adar and swear allegiance to be his followers. Adar and the orcs would attack Osterith and slaughter everyone if they refused. At the same time, Theo, who was resting to recover his wounds, was approached by a man named Waldrig, who turned out to know about the broken sword that Theo had stolen from his house. Waldrig revealed to Theo that he was a servant of Sauron, and the broken sword was not a sword, even though it resembled one. Waldrig then told Theo to prepare himself and save his strength for a war that might be imminent. Meanwhile, in Númenor, Queen Muriel and her people were watching Galadriel, who would soon be leaving Númenor. Therazen flattered Queen Muriel for making a decision to the wishes of the Númenorians. After Galadriel's departure, Therazen intended to organize a party in the palace to celebrate Queen Muriel's decision to refuse to cooperate with the elves. However, on their way to the castle, they were struck by the petals of the white tree. It began to fall as if accompanying Galadriel's departure. Queen Muriel, who saw that, then assumed that the petals of the white tree that had fallen were a sign of the elves' disappointment over her decision to refuse to help Galadriel. Therefore, Queen Muriel immediately summoned all officials and nobles to the palace and announced that she would escort Galadriel directly to Middle-earth to save the inhabitants of the Southlands. Queen Muriel made that decision because, as human beings, they had a responsibility to help the people of the Southlands who were fighting against the orcs. Queen Muriel didn't force her people to come along and help her on the battlefield. However, after listening to the Queen's speech, the conscience of the Numeners became aroused. They voluntarily offer themselves to join the forces that would assist the struggle of Galadriel and Queen Muriel, including Isildur and her two companions. Elsewhere, an orc named Grugzek reported to Adar about the excavation of the completed tunnel. Hearing that, Adar then ordered Grugzak to gather the legions of orcs because they would start a massive assault. At the same time, Bronwyn informed the people of the Southlands about Adar and his legions of orcs coming against Osterith. Bronwyn asked the villagers to defend their homeland and unite against Adar and the orcs. However, few of the villagers preferred to give their land to Adar and swore allegiance to be his followers because they felt pessimistic could win the battle against the orcs. Nevertheless, most chose to fight against the orcs to defend their homeland. The scene then turns to the Harfoots resting in a forest after a long journey. Nori and Poppy were looking for groceries when they accidentally found footprints of a wolf in the woods. They rushed to report it to one of the Harfoots' elders, Malva, who immediately decided to leave the forest. However, when they were about to leave the woods, a pack of wolves appeared and attacked them. Nori and the others rushed away, but Nori put up a fight, and a wolf was about to pounce on her. Luckily, the stranger got there on time and saved Nori. The stranger then used his magic power to drive out the pack of wolves so that it no longer disturbed the Harfoots. Nori then realized that the stranger had a wound on his hand after using his magic power. She rushed to concoct herb plants for medicine to heal the stranger. Nori saw the stranger's hand suddenly freeze as she was about to treat him. She then touched the stranger's hand, but her hand froze. Nori immediately panicked, let alone the stranger, to cast a spell with a scary look on his face. When he finished casting the spell, Nori's body was suddenly thrown back, and her hands were no longer frozen. 
The stranger then approached Nori to check on her condition, but Nori, still scared, then ran away from the stranger. Meanwhile, in Numenor, Galadriel showed her skill in using the sword to the Numenor warriors. She then told them how to kill the orcs, which required not only dexterity but also precision, speed, and the ability to trick them. At the same time, Queen Muriel met her father, who opposed Muriel's departure to the Southlands because he sensed the evil that had spread there. The next scene turns to Prince Durin, who is attending a dinner banquet in Linden at the invitation of the High King Gilgala. The supper, which was supposed to strengthen the friendship between the elves and the dwarves, became very tense because Prince Durin was involved in a debate with Gilgala. However, Durin overcame this, and Gilgala finally apologized to the dwarf for raising an opinion that offended him. After dinner, Gilgalad summoned Elrond and asked him to retell the stories of past battles between the Misty Mountains peaks. In the struggle, an elf warrior exerted all his power against the Balrog of Morgoth to protect a tree. In the middle of the fight, lightning struck and caused a pure force, believed to be the lost Silmaril, to form and permeate from the tree's roots to the mountain's depths. Gilgalad suspected Durin and the dwarves had acquired the power and asked Elrond to confirm it. Elrond, who had known about Mithril, chose to keep his oath to Durin and keep it a secret from Gilgalad. Afterward, Gilgalad invited Elrond to see the Tree of Life belonging to the elves that had suffered decay since Galadriel's return. Gilgalad assumed that the decay would cease after sending Galadriel back to Valinor. But what happened was the opposite. Gilgalad insisted that the elves would be wiped out if the light of Eldar faded from that tree and caused it to die. Afterward, Elrond met Lord Celebrimber, who told Elrond that the elves were losing their light and they would lose their immortality. The only way to save themselves and stay to fight against the growing evil was if they became saturated with the light of the Eldar, and for that, they needed large amounts of mithril. Meanwhile, in Numenor, Kemen, son of Farazan, attempted to destroy the expedition ships, believing Galadriel and Queen Muriel would take the fall, and allowed Farazan to rise to power with the Numenorean's support. Isildur, who had stowed away on one of the ships, caught Kemen, preventing the destruction of more than two of the five boats and saving him from drowning after the explosions. Once ashore, Isildur was questioned about the incident, but he lied about Kemen's sabotage. Meanwhile, in Southlands, Waldrig and some villagers who chose to ally with Adar then left Osterith to meet Adar to express their loyalty. However, Waldrig was disappointed when he discovered that he was not Sauron but still chose to serve him. In Osterith, Theo then showed the broken sword that had the sign of Sauron to Arendir. Upon seeing that, Arendir revealed that the broken sword was a key used to enslave the Southlanders. Bronwyn, who knew that then, worried about whether she would fight against Adar and the orcs or choose to surrender and ally with them. However, Arendir tried to convince her that they would find a way to defeat Adar and the orcs and asked her to stick to her faith and win the battle. The next day, Elrond revealed to Prince Durin the fate of the elven race that would be wiped out if they lost the light of Eldar. He then told Durin that the light of Eldar could be restored with Mithril, so he needed large amounts to save his kind. Durin looked surprised to hear that and decided to help Elrond get Mithril. But before that, he had to convince his father to give more mithril to the elves. Meanwhile, in Numenor, Queen Muriel, Galadriel, Halbrand, and the Numenor warriors prepared to head to the Southlands to help the Southlands in their fight against the orcs. At the same time, in the Southlands, Adar and his legions of orcs headed to Osterith and finally arrived at the Watchtower. They discovered that the Watchtower had been abandoned by the inhabitants of the Southlands. Even so, Adar found Arendir, who was hiding in the place. He ordered his legions of orcs to split up to check the location. It all turned out to be part of Arendir's plan to trap the orcs in Osterith and burn the place down with the orcs inside, while Bronwyn led the villagers to Turared to seize their homeland. The following day, Arendir tried to destroy Sauron's broken sword in various ways, but his efforts were in vain. He decided to hide the broken sword because he could not destroy it. However, without Arendir's knowledge, Theo secretly observed him from a distance to find out where he hid the broken sword. After that, Arendir and Bronwyn gathered the villagers to convey their strategy against Adar and the orcs. The villagers began to prepare weapons to fight and defend themselves against the orcs' attacks. While Bronwyn and the others fought against the orcs, the elderly and children took refuge in prepared shelters. In the evening, the villagers occupied their positions. They were preparing to attack Adar and his regions of the orcs. Bronwyn barely made a fatal mistake before starting the attack but she managed to get over it and launched a surprise attack toward the orcs. Seeing the signal sent by Bronwyn, Arendir and others rushed to launch attacks against the orcs who attacked them from various sides. The residents of the Southlands were trying to defend themselves from the attacks of the orcs, who were far more numerous. Despite being overwhelmed by the orcs' attack, Arendir and others managed to win the battle. However, during the victory, Arendir noticed something strange when he saw one of the orc bleedings in red instead of black as usual. Arendir, curious, took off the orc's helmet, surprised that the army they defeated was not the orcs but the traitorous villagers who had abandoned them for Adar disguised as orcs. Shortly afterward, from the shadows of the trees around the village, the true orc army rained down arrows, killing many villagers and severely wounding Bronwyn. 
Finding refuge in the shelter, Theo and Arendir cauterized Bronwyn's wound to stem the bleeding. Not long after, Adar and his orcs broke into the shelter and demanded the location of the broken blade. Arendir tried to negotiate, but the orcs continued to slay more people until they got what they wanted. Because Adar didn't want to kill more people, Theo finally told him the location of the broken blade. After he got the broken sword, he proclaimed the victory and ordered the rest of the humans to be slain. At the same time, the Numenorean army suddenly arrived and slew the remaining orcs, saving the villagers. Upon knowing that, Adar gave Waldrig a task before attempting to escape. Adar tried to flee to the forest while carrying a bundle of cloth, but Galadriel and Halbrand chased after him and finally managed to capture the Lord Father of the Orcs. Halbrand was overwhelmed with vengeance and anger, then tried to kill Adar. But Galadriel immediately stopped him while telling Halbrand that Adar was not Sauron. She confirmed that she would interrogate Adar to uncover where Sauron was and the plans he was planning to run. Galadriel then took Adar to Turarad and held him in a warehouse to be interrogated. She knew about Adar's origins as one of the Moriandor, the elves corrupted by Morgoth, the first orc later referred to as Uruk. When Galadriel inquired about where Sauron was, Adar said he had killed him because he had sacrificed many orcs to carry out his plan to rule Middle-earth. Adar, who considered the orcs, his children, decided to become the Lord Father leading the orcs to rule Middle-earth. However, Galadriel could not believe Adar's assertion that he had killed Sauron because she felt confident that Sauron was still alive and was gathering the strength to carry out his plan. Adar deliberately provoked Galadriel's anger and tried to kill him with his blade. However, Halbrand suddenly appeared and prevented Galadriel from killing Adar. Galadriel then left the place with a bundle of cloth that Adar had brought. After defeating Adar and his orcs, Queen Muriel and the Numenor warriors celebrated with the people of Southlands. Queen Muriel introduced Halbrand as the true king of the Southlands to Bronwyn and the villagers, who then paid homage to Halbrand as their new king. On the other hand, Galadriel approached Arendir and handed him the bundle of cloth she had taken from Adar. Arendir then gave the cloth bundle to Theo and told him to hand it to the Numenor soldiers to be thrown into the sea when they came home. However, Theo was surprised when he found out that the contents of the cloth packet were an axe, not the broken blade of Sauron. The scene then switches to Waldreg, who turns out to get the broken sword from Adar before he tries to escape. Waldreg then brought the broken blade to the watchtower and planted it into a mechanism causing a nearby dam to open. Because the dam barrier had been opened, the river water only flowed through the tunnel dug by the orcs, leading to a volcano, and clashes with magma, resulting in the mountain's eruption and a pyroclastic cloud that approached the village. Seeing that, the villagers rushed to a safer place, while the orcs took advantage of the opportunity to launch an attack. Shortly after that, the volcano burst of hot lava began to rain down on Turarad, but Galadriel did not leave the place to save herself. After the volcano eruption, Turarad was covered in thick fog due to the dust from the lava spray. The flames were still visible in some corners of the village as Galadriel tried to rise up and help some survivors until finally, he met Theo, who was trying to find his mother. At the same time, Queen Muriel and her soldiers survived, then helped the surviving villagers and led them to safety. Isildur and Queen Muriel tried to rescue some villagers trapped under the rubble. Isildur was trapped in the wreckage, and Queen Muriel could not escape when the hot ashes of the volcano hit her eyes. Meanwhile, Nori and the Harfoots finally arrived in the region affected by the volcanic eruption. Sadok saw an area burned to the ground by a volcanic eruption. He said the volcano erupted because a crime had spread in the Southlands. At the same time, the stranger approached a tree that had died from a volcanic eruption and then touched it while muttering something. Sadok and the Harfoots assumed that the stranger wanted to fix the tree with his magic power. But what happened was the opposite. When the stranger finished the spell, suddenly, the tree branch fell and struck Nori and her sister, Dilly, who happened to be not far from the tree. Sadok and the Harfoots, who saw the incident, rushed to help Nori and Dilly, and they seemed afraid of the stranger. Meanwhile, in Khazad Doom, Elrond met with King Durin and begged the King of Dwarves to be willing to help the elves, who were threatened to perish. However, the King of Dwarves refused to support the elves, so Durin apologized to Elrond for disappointing his best friend. When Elrond left Khazad Doom to return to Linden, the upset Durin accidentally placed a mithril near the leaves of the decaying Tree of Life of the Elves. Surprisingly, the leaf slowly turns back to how it was before as if mithril had healed it. Seeing that, Durin and Dissa decided to help Elrond, even though the decision was against his father. Durin hurried to call Elrond, took him to the quarry, and conducted an excavation. Soon after, they finally found a large amount of mithril undermining. However, their excavation was immediately known to King Durin. He immediately took decisive action by expelling Elrond from the entire dwarf's territory and revoking Durin's status as the crown prince and heir. King Durin then expressed his disappointment with his son for opposing his decision and choosing to help the elves. In the Southlands, Queen Muriel and her army, who survived the volcanic eruption, decided to evacuate to a safer place with the villagers. Alendo watched the survivors who climbed the hill while trying to find his son's existence among the people who survived the volcanic eruption. 
Elendil then met Queen Muriel and Valendil, who told him Isildur had been killed in the rubble after rescuing several residents trapped in their house. Not only that, in the incident, Queen Muriel also lost her sight and went blind. Elendil was shocked and devastated when he found out his son had died, but he decided not to rise and mourn because he was still responsible for protecting the queen and leading the survivors to a safer place. At the same time, Sadok gave a page tier of a book about the constellation to the stranger while suggesting that the stranger go to Greenwood Forest to find clues about the constellation he had been searching for. Hearing that, the stranger intended to follow Sadok's advice and met Nori to say goodbye. Nori, who knew that the stranger would travel a long way to find the constellation he was looking for, then gave an apple as a farewell sign. In the evening, Galadriel and Theo were resting after a long journey. They had a conversation in which Galadriel told Theo that she had lost her brother and her husband in the war against Sauron and the orcs. Theo was surprised when he found out that Galadriel was married, especially after she told him about when she first met Celebrin who would become her husband. Theo then told Galadriel that he felt guilty for everything that happened. Seeing Theo, who seemed frustrated, Galadriel tried to comfort him while informing him that everything that happened was not Theo's wish, so he did not have to feel guilty about it. In the middle of their conversation, a squad of the orcs suddenly appeared. They were about to hunt down those who had survived the volcanic eruption incident. Galadriel and Theo were hiding near them and almost spotted when the orcs' leader checked the situation around their hideout. But then, the orcs decided to get the hell out of there because there were more important things they had to do. The next day, Nori, who had just woken up, was surprised by Poppy telling her that they were getting an abundance of crops. The scorched trees previously touched by the stranger were growing back and producing abundant fruit. The Harfoots were delighted to get a supply of groceries that would meet their needs for the next few seasons, while Nori was pleased to know that the stranger could use his magic for good. After picking fruits and vegetables, Poppy and the Harfoots went to the river to get water. When Poppy filled her bucket with water, she accidentally saw human-sized footprints traced in the mud by the river. Seeing that, she hurried away, left her bucket, and let it float along the stream. Poppy's bucket was then taken by a mysterious woman and her two comrades, who seemed to be looking for something or someone. In the evening, Poppy and Nori, hiding behind a bush, see three mysterious women walking toward a tree previously touched by the stranger. Nori, who assumed that the mysterious women were looking for the stranger and intended to kill him, came out of hiding and told them the wrong direction so they could not find the stranger. One of the mysterious women tried to attack Nori, but her father got there on time and tried to drive them away. However, the mysterious woman instead used her magic to burn the Harfoot's camp and scorch all their food supplies. The next day, Nori was gloomy because she was worried about the stranger's safety. Nori then asked her parents permission to go to find the stranger to warn him about the mysterious woman who was hunting him. Poppy decided to accompany Nori and Sadok, who was the excellent tracker. Marigold agreed to come to them because he worried about Nori and Poppy's safety. In the Southlands, Galadriel and Theo finally arrived at the camp of Queen Muriel and the Numenorians. Theo rushed to the infirmary to look for his mother and felt relieved when he learned that his mother and Arendir had survived the tragedy. Meanwhile, Galadriel met Queen Muriel, who planned to return to Númenor with Elendil and her army. However, Queen Muriel promised Galadriel that she would return to the Southlands with more troops. While Galadriel intended to go to Linden to report Adar and his orcs' movements to Gil-galad, Bronwyn and the Southlanders planned to go to Pelargir, the old Númenorean colony in Anduin, to start a new life. Arendir then took Galadriel to see Halbrand, who was seriously injured by the incident. Knowing that Halbrand would not survive if he remained in the camp, Galadriel decided to take Halbrand to Linden so the elves could treat Halbrand. Galadriel and Halbrand rushed to Linden on horseback while the Southlanders joked Halbrand as their king and delivered his departure. Meanwhile, in the Khazad Doom, King Durin ordered the dwarves to close the mithril mine. Before leaving, the king threw the leaves of the elves' tree of life into the mithril quarry. The leaf then burned and brought up the figure of Balrog, who seemed to rise again. In the Southlands area that was affected by the volcanic eruption, Adar and his orcs then celebrated the victory for successfully carrying out their plan. Adar then changed the region's name to Mordor and claimed the territory as his power area. The next day, the stranger finally arrived at Greenwood and met the three mysterious women. Instead of attacking the stranger, they worshipped him and called him Lord Sauron. Meanwhile, Elrond and Celebrimbor seemed to engage in serious discussions to find a solution to the problems the elves were facing after King Durin refused to help them. At the same time, Galadriel and Halbrand arrived at Linden, where Galadriel then asked Elrond and Celebrimbor to treat the severely wounded Halbrand. A few days later, Halbrand finally recovered and went to Celebrimbor in his workshop to express his admiration for Celebrimbor, the legendary elven smith whose craft was very famous in Middle-earth. Halbrand looked at some gemstones owned by Celebrimbor and inquired about their advantages. Celebrimbor said that the gems were given the power of Valenor. Even so, he could not use the gemstones to save the elves whose lives began to fade in Middle-earth. Therefore, they still needed large amounts of mithril to save the elves from destruction. 
Upon learning that, Halbrand suggested that Celebrimber mix Mithril with the gemstones that he had to get the same strength as Mithril. Celebrimber seemed to consider Halbrand's suggestion, although he doubted it would work. Meanwhile, in Numenor, Farazin assembled some of the best painters to paint King Tar Palantir, whose life might not be long. One of the chosen painters was Isildur's sister, Irion, who had an hour to paint the king. When she was painting, suddenly, the king was delirious and thought of Irion as Queen Muriel. Irion tried to summon the servants, but the king got out of bed and told her to enter the room where Palantir was. The scene turns to Linden, where Gil-galad is discussing with Elrond, Celebrimber, and Galadriel to find a solution to their problem. Celebrimber then told Halbrand the suggestion, but Gil-galad immediately rejected it because he thought only Mithril could heal the elves' tree of life and maintain the elves' existence in Middle-earth. When Gil-galad engaged in a debate with Elrond and Celebrimber, Galadriel instead realized that Celebrimber mentioned exactly the same sentence Adar had said about Sauron. After Gil-galad and Elrond left the place, Galadriel asked Celebrimber about the sentence, but Celebrimber didn't seem to remember much from where he heard it. Galadriel, who assumed that Celebrimber might have listened to the sentence from Halbrand, ordered one of the elves to investigate the genealogy of the kings of the Southlands and asked him to keep it a secret from anyone. On the other hand, Elrond managed to convince Gil-galad to give them a chance to try the way proposed by Halbrand to save the elves in Middle-earth. Celebrimber and his team rushed to do their work, assisted by Halbrand. In the evening, the three mysterious women told the stranger that she was from the land of the East or known as Rune. They told the stranger that he was the Dark Lord with great power to rule the world. However, since the stranger could not control his power, they were also sent to help him. At the same time, Nori and the Harfoots hiding behind the bushes saw the stranger tied to a tree by the mysterious woman. Nori and the others secretly approached the stranger and released him. However, how surprised Nori and the Harfoots were when they found out that the stranger was one of the mysterious women in disguise. They then attacked Nori and the Harfoots until finally, the real stranger arrived and attacked the mysterious woman. They were then involved in a fierce fight, but the stranger soon became overwhelmed when facing the three women. When he was desperate, Nori stole the staff of one of the women and gave it to the stranger, saying that he was not an evil man. Upon hearing that, the stranger rose and successfully defeated the mysterious woman, who realized that the stranger was not Sauron, but Ishtar. Due to the attack from the mysterious woman, Sadok suffered quite severe injuries. He died after his last wish to see the sunrise was fulfilled. Meanwhile, Queen Muriel and her army, who had just arrived in Numenor, were shocked by the atmosphere of Numenor filled with black flags, signaling that the Numenorians were mourning the death of King Tar Palantir. The scene turns back to Celebrimber, who continued to fail while trying to unite the Mithril with the gemstones he had. Galadriel, who knew that then, suggested they took a break because they had been pushing themselves too hard lately. Galadriel's words inspired Halbrand, who suggested that they lower the pressure when uniting Mithril and the gemstones. Shortly after that, Galadriel learned that Halbrand was not a descendant of the King of the Southlands, whose bloodline had been cut off for a thousand years. Galadriel then interrogated Halbrand, forcing him to reveal his real identity. He later said that he was known to have many names, which proved that he was Sauron. Knowing that her archenemy was standing before her, Galadriel tried to kill Sauron. But Sauron immediately stopped her and sent her into a world of illusion, where Galadriel met her older brother, Finrod. He was acting strangely because he seemed to support Sauron's actions to rule Middle-earth. Galadriel soon realized that Sauron was trying to control her mind and managed to free herself. However, Galadriel was again thrown into another illusion when she first met Sauron in the ocean. Sauron tried to convince Galadriel that he intended to restore Middle-earth and offered to Galadriel to be his queen, who would rule Middle-earth with him. However, Galadriel firmly rejected the offer, even though Sauron threatened her. She finally regained consciousness and found Elrond by her side after rescuing her, who almost drowned in the river. Elrond then asked about what had happened, and Halbrand was. But Galadriel chose to shut up and asked about their work. He said that they had successfully combined Mithril and the gemstones and were about to make a ring. Knowing that their work might have been influenced by Sauron's evil forces, Galadriel then asked Celebrimber to make three more rings to suppress them. However, to make the other three rings, Celebrimber needed gold and silver from Valinor, so Galadriel had to give up Finrod's dagger made of gold and silver from Valinor. They finally managed to make three rings that were then called the Three Rings of Power, which only the elves could wear. The Three Rings of Power were free of Sauron's influence, as he did not have a hand in their making. However, they were still forged by Celebrimber with the arts taught to him by Sauron. Meanwhile, after the stranger defeated the mysterious women, Nori and the Harfoots returned to the Harfoots camp. The stranger then told Nori that he would proceed to Rune to find clues about the constellations. Nori intended to accompany him. Surprisingly, her parents permitted her to go. She said goodbye to her parents, Poppy and the Harfoots, who were very proud of Nori for her bravery and concern for the stranger. The series ended by showing Sauron, who arrived in Mordor and decided to claim the region as his territory. Sauron intended to muster strength in Mordor to realize his ambition to rule Middle-earth. 
The moral that can be learned from this movie is, like Galadriel said, it darkens the heart, to call dark deeds good. It gives a place for evil to thrive inside us. Every war is fought both without and within. Of that, every soldier must be mindful.